Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Monday, March 20th, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Tuesday, March 21st. Uh, let's see, currently we have futures that are um, a little bit higher. Of course, uh, this is the evening before, so things can change quite a bit overnight. But right now, futures are up 51 on the Dow, seven and a quarter on the S&P 500, and about 17 on the NASDAQ. Crude oil prices are up just a tad to about 67.75 per barrel. And we've got the 10-year Treasury yield up uh, about two basis points to 3.50%. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the... Uh, agenda for today. So I'm going to start off with the daily market recap. Then we'll get into talking technically. Um, chart of the day, the scooter report, earning spotlight, and then we will wrap up with the three you must see. So let's jump into that daily market recap, take a look at what happened on Monday. We saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average rise 383 points, that was 1.2%. S&P 500 was up 35, that was 0.9%. Um, NASDAQ up 45 points, that was about four-tenths of 1%. Mid caps, 40 points, 1.7%. And small caps were up 15, 1.3%. So just about everything was flipped from last week. If you recall last week, we had most of the value stocks on the Dow, the S&P, Many of the small cap, mid, net, mid cap names were down and we saw the NASDAQ and many of the growth stocks going up. Well, everything kind of flipped and even though the NASDAQ was up on Monday, it trailed pretty badly uh, relative to the other areas of the market, especially value oriented areas. So it was a, a much different day on Monday than what we saw last week. The uh, materials group up 2%, that was the best performing sector. Energy also up about 2%. Staples, 1.4%. Then we had industrials, 1.3%. And healthcare, 1.27%. But you notice uh, what's missing in those top five sectors. No technology, no consumer discretionary, no communication services. So the three big growth-oriented sectors were nowhere to be found at the top of the leaderboard. So things definitely... Uh, changed a little bit on uh, Monday from what we were experiencing er, experiencing the prior week. Looking at the 10-year Treasury yield, you can see that the 10-year Treasury yield actually uh, fell back to test the 3.40% area. So if I annotate this, you can see that we've had multiple tests down around 340 and we could even go down maybe to about the 335, 337 area. But this has been the key area of support on the 10-year Treasury yield. We tested it in December. We had another test in mid-January, another one beginning of February. And here we are again, back down at that 340 level. Now, we did bounce off of it today, finishing up 348. As I just mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, the 10-year Treasury yield is up about two basis points after hours, so we're looking at close to 3.50%. Um, let's go ahead and move on. And <clears throat> just wanted to go over the economic reports that will be due out on Tuesday. Really not much over the next couple of days. On Tuesday, we have February existing home sales. So January was 4 million. We're expecting to see that tick up just a little bit to 4,170,000 units. So we do uh, expect to see a little bit of an increase there. And then Wednesday, we've got the um, rate decision. So we're going to have the FOMC announcement out at 2 p.m. It's widely expected that the Fed is going to raise another 25 basis points, which will send that short-term Fed funds rate up higher, but looking at the 10-year Treasury yield, you can see that's been coming down. That's squeezing bank margins or will 
squeeze bank margins if it continues. So that's something we'll be looking for uh, down the road. I do expect the 10-year Treasury yield to continue to decline, and I expect later this year we're going to see the Fed funds rate coming back down. But in the meantime, banks uh, in particular could struggle. <clears throat> All right, so let's move on to talking technically. Um, wanted to uh, take a look quickly at the S&P 500. And you can see still, I mean, we're up today, but we're still struggling to get back through that 20-day moving average, which is at 39.62. We got as high as 39.57, closed at 39.51 and change. So that's going to be step one. Let's get through that 20-day moving average. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, um, <clears throat> the high, the reaction high that we saw back in September was at about 12,750. We went up in February, got a little bit above that level, and just recently got up to about 12,700, but we have backed off of it. The good news is we remain above the 20-day EMA. So at least we're still trending in the right direction with the NASDAQ. But the big breakout that we would look for is probably at about 12,750 to 12,800. If we get through that level, then we're going to be uh, staring at that mid-August high. All right, let's move on to the chart of the day. So I wanted to show you this IDEX Labs chart. Um, for one reason in particular, this is a three-month chart. And up at the top, I have the PPO and the MACD. And if you look at these, and if you're not familiar with the differences, there really aren't a whole lot of differences between the PPO and the MACD. The signal looks almost exactly the same. I actually saw this chart because it appeared on a predefined chart at Stock Charts. Let me see if I can take you over to the dashboard. I'll show you where I saw this. So if you go down under your scans and you click on this more, it'll show one of the lines is uh, predefined scans. If you click on that, what I did is I just pulled up bullish MACD crossovers and went to the NASDAQ. There are 79 of them from Monday and pulled that up. And then I put this in scooter order. And notice the second chart was IDEX Labs, and it was in medical supplies. And I thought, well, let's take a look at that chart. So when I pulled it up, the bullish MACD crossover, what it's talking about, what it's talking about is the um, just the crossover of its nine-day moving average. So this is the MACD, the thick black line, which is the difference between the 12 day and the 26 day EMA. And then this red line is the nine day moving average of the MACD. So it's just the MACD. And then this is, you can kind of see it lags behind the actual movement in the MACD. And then when the MACD starts to turn back up again and crosses over that nine day moving average, that's what's referred to as a bullish MACD crossover. So I just wanted to point that out and make sure that everyone understands that. And when you're looking at the PPO, Notice the PPO is doing the same thing. The PPO, if you look at the numbers over here, the PPO crossed just above the nine-day moving average, just like the MACD did. The only difference between these two is that the PPO is based on the percentage difference between the 12-day and the 26-day EMA, whereas the MACD is based on the price difference. Percentage difference versus price difference. But still, you can see that the signals, the, the indicators themselves look very similar. But I like the chart when I pulled it up, not so much because of the fact that we went through the moving averages or that we saw these crossovers, because I think that's just confirming what I would have already looked at as a buy point. So I'm going to stretch this back out to a year. And if I annotate, TA101, broken price resistance becomes support. So look at the double top here. We had it 445 or so. We went right through it in January. And then notice where we came back down and hit before we started rising again. 
So the buy point, in my opinion, was where we hit price support. And then this movement back up to the upside is just confirmation that we're resuming the prior trend. So I think it's a little late when you're looking at um, uh, crossovers and things like that because they're lagging indicators. They're already – they're telling you that the momentum is starting to pick back up again. But I like to buy when you go back to price support. That's where I find the best reward to risk. Everybody's a little different. Some like to trade the momentum after it starts to build. I like to see it when I get back to a key support level. So I thought IDEX, I thought this was a pretty interesting chart. In addition to hitting price support, I think if we um, – actually, let's take a look at the um, – trend if we connect the recent lows and the highs so right there that trend is probably not going to be quite the same yeah that's not quite the same but perhaps a channel will develop i mean if we go back up through the 515 area it's very possible we continue moving especially if the market is more bullish so maybe at some point down the road the top part of that channel will come into play but for now, what I would do is just view this as a trend line um, and knowing that the price support sits just below it. If th both those levels are lost, I would be out of IDXX. But right now, I think it looks like a pretty good chart. The other thing that I like to do, too, is I like to pull this up on a relative basis. So you can see the AD line, very strong. Even with price moving down the last month, look at the AD line continuing to rise. So there were some positives already built into this chart long before we got that PPO and, or MACD crossover. Um, IDXX has been trending higher relative to the medical supplies group. And medical supplies relative to the S&P 500 has been a pretty strong performer since back in the middle of November. So you've got a pretty strong group. You've got a strong stock within the group. And then you've got that stock hitting price support and bouncing off of it. And now we're starting to see some other confirming indicators. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty interesting chart on the uh, on IDXX. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is just remind everyone, we do talk about individual charts and industry group charts and things like that in our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. So if you go to earningsbeats.com and you scroll down, you'll find an area where you can sign up. This is a three times a week newsletter, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning usually out around 8.30 in the morning. Simply type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button, and we'll make sure we get you set up. Uh, we also do free events from time to time, and we reach out to our Earnings Beats Digest community for any of those free events. So make sure you get signed up if you're not already. If you want to try our service at Earnings Beats, you can click on this Start Your No-Cost Trial button. You get 30 days for free, and we will remind you before the 30 days is up to make sure you want to um, uh, extend your membership. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Scooters, the Stock Charts Technical Rank. It's just an acronym, SCTR. You'll find it. You'll see some of these uh, panels on your dashboard where you've got Scooter Reports Large Cap, Scooter Reports Mid Cap, Scooter Reports Small Cap. You could do ETFs. You could do other exchanges. But I usually have mine set to large cap, mid cap, and small cap. And then you can look at the um, scooters that are moving down the fastest that day, moving up the fastest that day, or the bottom 10, which are going to be near zero, and the top 10, which are going to be up near 99.9. Uh, .9. So there are different ways to look at each of these different asset classes. But what I'm going to do today <clears throat> is I'm just going to go in and pull up one of our chart lists, I'm going to pull up our, um, let's see, the strong AD chart list, which is a chart list that features companies with strong accumulation distribution lines. Now, you might be interested in knowing, okay, well, they have strong AD lines, but what does their um, relative strength look like? Well, one way to do that, the scooter score, that is a measure of relative strength. Now, the one limit or the one limitation that the scooter has is that the formula, if you go back and you study it, 
only takes into account price action for the last five or six months. So if there's a group that's been doing well for five months, but it's been in a down 10 year downtrend, that group is going to have a lot of uh, really high scooter scores, but it may be um, a situation where it doesn't last. So the limitation on scooter scores is that you're only looking at relative strength really over the last five or six months. So just keep that in mind. But if I view all, so I can take all of these strong AD stocks, and this is a chart list that if you're a paid member of Earnings Beats, you can either view or you can download it into your stock charts account if you have a start stock charts account. Um, but if you go into edit, you'll see number one that there are 564 stocks on this list. So a lot of research has been done. These things are handpicked and ready to just be dropped into your account at stock charts if you're a member there. But here, let's take a look at the summary. And what you can do under summary form, notice we don't have the scooter showing anywhere, but if you go under this columns, you can hit scooter. And I could actually, well, I'll leave the sector and industry group, but I could take out some of these other columns if I wanted to. And that's how you do it. Select that columns. But now I've got the scooter. So which stocks have strong scooter scores? Which ones have weak? Well, there's the weak ones. And here are your strong scooters. So most of these stocks, and remember this uh, strong AD chart list was put together about three weeks ago. So most of these charts probably still have strong ADs, but this will be one that we'll probably update here over the next week or two uh, for our members. But in the meantime, here are the top performing stocks in terms of scooter rank. So these are not only stocks that have shown signs of accumulation, but they're also showing uh, excellent relative strength um, on their charts. So let's pull up NVIDIA and take a look. Now, of course, semiconductors have been very strong. So one good thing is that with, with uh, NVIDIA and all of these semiconductors, they have just gone through a very strong period. So here's NVIDIA's uh, AD line. You can see it just set a new high, which is great, another 52-week high. Price action has been very strong. And if you noticed, this was almost a perfect bottoming head and shoulder pattern. So if you take a look across here, we didn't quite get up to the neckline, but this was a left shoulder, neckline, head, neckline, right shoulder, came down almost perfectly symmetrical with the left shoulder, and then breakout. And this measures from 192 down to 110, so roughly $82. You get a breakout, that's going to measure up to about 275. We've made most of it already. We're up to 259. We've got earnings coming out soon on NVIDIA. Um, I suspect either before or with earnings, we'll probably be up there. But look at the relative strength on NVIDIA relative to the semiconductors. Huge move to the upside. How about the semiconductors relative to the S&P 500? Look at this move. Does this look like a, uh, an area of the market that's worried about a recession? Worried about inflation? Worried about higher interest rates? Worried about the Russia-Ukraine war? Worried about anything? It's going straight up. Money is rotating it into it hand over fist versus the S&P 500. And NVIDIA is one of the leaders. So that's what happens when you take a look at both scooter scores, which gives you relative strength, and then also strong ADs, which is a sign of accumulation. You can come up with some great looking uh, charts. So let's go back to the strong AD. And let me just look at uh, maybe one other stock. How about Axon? This is a smaller defense company. AD line. Look at it. Beautiful. Just recently, look at the volume with earnings. Gaps up. When it pulls back, where does it hold? Top of gap support and the 20-day moving average before it now starting to turn back to the upside again. How about relative strength? There's Axon relative to defense stocks, straight up. Now, defense, 
relative to the S&P has not been doing so great. But because you have such a massive leader in this space, continuing, the stock's continuing to do very well. Now you got to, I'm going to pull up a couple. I want to show you two chart or two um, gap support levels that were tested beautifully on this chart. Here with its November earnings, and you can see the volume picked up. Gaps up, continues moving up. Look at where it comes back down to eventually, to the, the support area. Never closed below it. Now look on this gap up with massive volume. Look where we came down to. Tested the top of gap support. <coughs> Excuse me. So AXON has been a great performer, and I wouldn't be surprised to see another breakout. I mean, there's a, there's a chance we could go to the bottom of gap support. It's not that far below down at 200, that would be closer to the 50 day. I wouldn't rule that out, but I do think that before we break below the 50 day, I think we'll absolutely break out again. That's my opinion, but that's what I would be looking for based on what the chart's telling me. All right, so that was scooter reports. That's another way of looking at scooters. If you already have a watch list of stocks in your, in a chart list of whatever, you know, just a regular watch list, it could be a scan that you ran, but you can, remember, you can sort this by scooter order to give you a signal as to which of these stocks has actually been showing some excellent relative strength. All right, let's move on to earnings spotlight. Give you a couple of these, and then we'll end with the three you must see. So let's start off with uh, GameStop. So GameStop, first of all, look at the AD line, horrible continues to drift lower with price action. That does not really bode well with me. Now, GameStop is potentially putting in a double bottom. This does not confirm until you clear this move to the upside. So you've got the high in between these two lows. 24 now is key resistance. And this 15 and a half to $16 level is your key support but you are downtrending. A, the AD line is not showing me anything. Relative strength versus specialty retailers has been horrible. This is a group specialty retail that had been doing really well. And yet GameStop continued to downtrend. It's just a horrible performer. So personally going into earnings, I wouldn't be expecting a whole lot here. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a miss or we had a disappointment, maybe lowered guidance, something like that. Uh, next, HQY, this is uh, Health Equity, another stock that's been beaten up badly heading into its earnings tomorrow. Um, I don't really like the breakdown just before earnings, the big volume, the relative weakness. It's at a 52-week low relative to software. Software has been on fire uh, so far in 2023, and this stock setting new lows in a very strong group. That doesn't sit well with me. I would not be expecting a whole lot here with uh, health equity. Um, let's go ahead and do the three you must see. I'm going to stick with the theme of earnings, but I'm going to pick three companies that will be reporting later this week. And let's take a look and see what they look like as our three you must see. The first one I'm going to pull up here is ARRY. Um, the stock has pulled back quite a bit. The AD line looks good, though. Relative strength has kind of fallen apart relative to renewable energy. But it is at support. You've got this gap support over here just below $16 from back in November. Um, and it's come down now twice, just above 16 getting very close to the support level. So we'll see whether or not that holds. That would be the key area of support for me on ARRY. The next stock that I'll pull up, how about, let's look at AIR. So this is AAR Corp. So we've got uh, now looking at aerospace. Now aerospace, the stock relative to the aerospace group, you can see just recently we put in about 11 month relative high on AAR relative to aerospace, its peer group. Aerospace has been pretty strong since back in September of last year been trending higher. So you've got a pretty good stock in a nice area of the market. 
And we were just up here at this high, which was our relative peak as well. I think we've just pulled back and consolidated. This is a stock that I wouldn't be surprised to see a nice reaction with its earnings. And AIR also reports on Tuesday. So we'll see what kind of uh, reaction we get. But this is one I wouldn't be shocked to see it back up above the 20 and quickly testing the recent highs. So it's in a nice uptrend, AD line good, relative strength line good. It's in a strong group. Um, this is one I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a decent reaction. And then the last one I have for you, <clears throat> excuse me, um, GIS. So this is a consumer staple, General Mills. Stock's been trending lower. It did gap up recently. It needs to get through 81, 81 and a half. The relative strength has been picking up, but food products overall not been very strong. I think eventually the more aggressive groups are going to take off and outperform these defensive groups. So I personally would be a little bit nervous heading into this report on General Mills, but we do have a wide range of uh, resistance 87, support down around 74, 75, and we're trading right in the middle of it. So we'll see what happens, uh, but GIS reports on Thursday. All right, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'll be back on Wednesday over at earningsbeats.com for your next Trading Places Live. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.